This video contains potentially sensitive content on the nature of depression. This video is intended to inform, not to provide a diagnosis. Each person may have different experiences with symptoms. Please seek professional help if you feel that you may be struggling with any of these disorders. Digging deeper into depression. If you know of someone who shows symptoms such as a lack of motivation, is constantly in depressed mood, has too little or too much of an appetite, and has trouble maintaining interest, you might use the word depressed to describe them. This term is used loosely in everyday language, and people don't recognize all there is to depression. Depression is a common mental illness, and is different from day-to-day -day fluctuations in mood, as it differs in severity, types of symptoms, and onset. In many cases, people are not aware of the type of depression they are going through, which makes it harder for them to utilize proper resources. In our show, Demystifying Depression, we are going to walk you through three main types of depressive disorders so that you can get the help that you may need. We will be meeting with three patients with three unique experiences with depression. We will be examining dysthymia, psychotic depressive disorder, and seasonal affective disorder. Hi, Jen. How can I help you today? Well, Dr. Julie, over the last few weeks, I've been experiencing fatigue, loss of appetite, feelings of hopelessness, and sadness. The first time I experienced this was two years ago, and it hasn't stopped. I never had the courage to ask for help until I seen your TV show and heard how famous you are. I feel like my life is going to come to an end, and there's no way out, and I really need your help. Well, Jen, I believe you have dysthymia, which is also known as persistent depressive disorder. It is a form of depression where symptoms are less severe than major depressive disorder, but persists for a long period of time, and by long, I mean two or more years. Oh no. Are there any treatments for this disorder? Medicine usually consists of antidepressants such as serotonin inhibitors like floxetine, whereas cognitive behavioral therapy is like a talk therapy where you attend a limited number of sessions with a psychotherapist to help change your rational emotional behavior. So I'll prescribe you a combination of both and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you for your help, doctor. I'll see you in two weeks. Welcome back, everybody. We have a new patient here named Susan. Hello, everyone. I am Susan. It's an honor to be here. Susan, what can I help you with today? So this may sound crazy, but I've been seeing and hearing monsters in my kitchen. It only happens when I'm alone there at night. I also keep believing that I have cancer and that I will die soon. But when I visited my family doctor after the first time I felt this way, he said I was perfectly fine. It's quite sad having to feel this way. Interesting. And how long has this been going on for? Um, the first time I was feeling this way was three months ago, and it was happening on and off, and I didn't think much of it, until it's been happening almost every day for two weeks now, which is why I decided to come see you. Hey Susan, after hearing all of this, I believe that you have psychotic depression. This disorder is essentially major depressive disorder, but with psychotic features. It involves symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions, both of which you're experiencing. Individuals either experience one or both of these symptoms, and it varies case by case. This mood disorder causes one to be out of touch with reality, and the symptoms gradually develop over a span of a few months, but persist for at least two weeks, similar to your experience. I understand. Thank you for the information. Is there anything I can do to help with this disorder? It may take a few months to recover to help. I'll provide you a prescription for an antidepressant with an antipsychotic, and you will take this for a couple of months. If symptoms persist, I recommend electroconvulsive therapy. This type of therapy is more on the risky side and electrically induces a minor seizure in the brain to target specific areas. The longer you wait to take action, the more you'll begin to believe these hallucinations and delusions are real. Thank you for the information, doctor. I will definitely take it into consideration. Up next, we have Steve. How can I help you today, Steve? Hello, Dr. Julie. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been feeling symptoms of depression, such as fatigue and loss of appetite. This has happened before, especially during the fall and winter months. This goes away in the summer and spring, but it started to reoccur this fall. 
See, this sounds like seasonal affective disorder, where symptoms of depression raise and fall during the same time of the year. This has been linked to a decrease in exposure to sunlight. That's why it's common to have sad during the fall and the winter, since the days are shorter and there is less sunlight available. Usually people brush this off as a seasonal blues, but it is important to seek treatment to maintain your mood and motivation throughout the year. One common treatment for SAD includes light therapy, where you're exposed to artificial light to offer a relief of symptoms. Otherwise, medication and cognitive behavioral therapy can go a long way to help you feel better. Thanks, Doc. I knew I could count on your help. In conclusion, it can be observed that dysthymia is characterized by symptoms such as fatigue, loss of appetite, and feeling hopeless. It is a persistent form of depression where symptoms are usually less severe in comparison to major depression and they usually persist for two or more years. Psychotic depression includes some symptoms such as hallucinations and delusions. Symptoms tend to develop gradually over a span of a few months and the symptoms persist for at least two weeks. In seasonal affective disorder, symptoms appear and disappear corresponding to a season, usually fall or winter. These symptoms tend to increase in severity as the season progresses. A few helpful resources include the National Suicide Prevention Line, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and Kids Help Phone. It's important to know that no one is ever alone when experiencing a mental illness. There is always help available, but it's up to you to take the chance to look for the help that you need.